Yo, what is going on my dudes? Today is Monday, April 9th, 2018, and we got another RuneScape update for y'all. So today we see the release of the rebuild for Edgeville. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. Alright guys, so those of you who may not know, Edgeville has actually been destroyed for quite some time now, many years to be in fact, as a result of the events in the Ritual of Majorot quest. Mandareth in Edgeville has been eager to hide the evidence of the Dragonkin attack, so it's up to you to help clean the area up and revitalize the town once and for all. So you do have to go over to Mandareth in the Edgeville bank to get started and you're going to have various different tasks that sees you running around cleaning up the area, rebuilding some of the walls and damage that has been done. Now once you have completed this, speak again with Mandareth and you will receive a Dragonkin lamp, much like the one you get from when you open up an effigy. Not only will you get a Dragonkin lamp, but you'll also unlock the chance to get the new effigy based pet effie which looks pretty cool just quick background information this obviously does require ritual of the majorat quest to have been completed and it is a members only activity seeing as you need to have completed that quest among the type of activities you need to be doing is cleaning up the scorch marks gathered around fix some of the broken structures clean up the burnt skeleton north of the bank clean up the fairy ring east of the river Clear some of the debris in the river Lum, clear some of that debris that's to the east of that river, and repair some of the trees around Edgeville. Now you will be getting some pretty generous chunks of XP for all the different activities that you do. The skills for which you'd be getting XP for are respective to the type of activities you're doing to help repair Edgeville. So it is a nice little reward. It is permanent content, so as long as you do the Ritual of Majorat, you will have the ability to rebuild Edgeville afterwards. So yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not much more to say over there. Head over to Edgeville if you complete a Ritual of the Majorats, talk to Mandareth, and get started finally revitalizing the town to the north. Anyways, guys, that wraps it up for the main game update. Let's head on over to the patch notes and see exactly what we've got going on over there. Let's have a look. Fixed an issue with Bubbles the Fishing Pet appearing as a blue box in Java. Fixed a graphical issue with the Replica God Wars Dungeon Armadale Override where face skin tone did not match the rest of the body. Removed alphas from Cogwheel, Camel, and Fair Dancer outfits. Added the correct model to the Adamant Throwing Axe when worn. Fixed the graphical issue when wearing Navigator Cuffs override. Edited the corners on the Sunset Skybox to make them less obvious. Your head will no longer stretch while wearing the Agent of the Eldest outfits without a head override. Fixed the positioning of the flame animation of the offhand ice dyed Kopesh. The female tier 7 Citadel Guard has had their ankles reattached. The level 8 skill requirement on the 1000 Agility, Herb Lore, and Prayer XP lamps awarded by Recruitment Drive has been removed. Updated Carnelian Rising start point in quest information. Removed a duplicate Surrock from the Hunt for Surrock mini quest. Fixed a typo in New Varrock Tasks reward description. Fixed an issue with the Achievement Tracker having an empty slot which could not be used. The south and west side story new Varrock achievement now correctly displays your progress to joining the Phoenix Gang and the Black Armed Gang. Players will now automatically attack Johnny the Beard in Dimension of Disaster to stop him from turning invisible. The 5 construction requirement and 500 construction XP reward has been removed from the Perils of Ice Mountain quest. If free to play gain access to a repeatable construction training method, this may be reverted in the future. The Odd Old Man Clue Scroll will now be prioritized when the Rotten Journal is obtained and destroyed. Harvesting Potato Cactus should now correctly add to farming urns. Wilderness Swords once again have their action bar left click as the Edgeville Teleport. Equipping a Task Set item no longer force an override to be equipped. Ardone Cloak Overrides can now be consistently equipped with the required tier of tasks completed. Tiles that once had notice boards will no longer block players while there is no active time limited event. Teleport jewelry pieces combined with teleport compactors are no longer automatically lost on death. One of the Piscatorus clue scroll scans has been adjusted slightly to no longer clash with the big Chinchapa spawn in that area. Cinderbane glove drops now show up on the Rune Magic's activity page. The tier 75 Tusca armor will now convert to tier 50 in free-to-play worlds when equipping the armor via presets. 
boosted the attack range of the Seren Godbow to 9. Stuns are now cleared when transitioning Telos from Phase 4 to 5. Void Shifter now correctly teleports you when life points are below 10%. Checking charges on the Slayer Helm now mentions teleports that are available to Morvran if the requirements are met. Removed Force Walk Tile from the Lumbridge Gatehouse. Remove the ability to use a Legendary Familiar with an Infused Beast of Burden pouch inside the Barrel's area. The Appear in Menagerie Toggle for the Buddy Pet should now work correctly. Mouse over tooltips for things like Elf City Clan cooldowns as well as combat buffs and debuffs no longer flicker on and off when performing actions such as pickpocketing to gain more XP and giving and receiving hits in combat. Elite Dungeoneering Outfit will now work correctly in Guardian Sphere Challenge Room. West Arno Knights now show their correct weakness. Potions will now have a drink option rather than eat when right clicking them in your inventory whilst the bank is open. An issue with the customization tab still being opened at the Wilderness Ditch which was used to stall players has been fixed. The shortcut into the Wilderness West of the Black Knights Fortress has been removed. Therefore, there is no longer 5 tiles of safe zone, but instead 2. The South Docks of the Port Sirim now correctly played music. Fixed an issue where the food item Pork Pie would sometimes not be consumed when eaten. Incorrect feedback message has been removed from the Tune, Bane, or Spell when you're using the exact number of runes. Players should now be able to correctly build wall decorations in the player own house. Legendary pet information is no longer visible for other types of pets when reopening the pet's interface. Added block into a rock in the Edgeville Monastery. When the elite dungeoneering outfit causes a slayer creature to spawn, the message will now state the name of the slayer creature. Survey polls will now display the full length of the votes bar and provide indicators for the pass percentage requirement for each question. The Grand Exchange now correctly uses its items price guide when buying and selling items. The Grapple Tree south of the Poison's Waste Spirit Tree will now correctly work with the Tool Belted Grappling Hook. Rise of the Six Bobbleheads and Tiny Death Overrides now correctly show kill count for other players. Loot Beam messages now state the items which has been dropped. You can now quick chat Gobi Reputation through the other tab under Combat Phrases. The Hellion Aura has been added to the Aura Management System. The reset mechanic for Auras has been updated to now include both the Hellion Aura's reset and Soul Reaper Reward Refresh Auras as part of the Aura Management System. The Rock of Dalgroth and the Rock Slide in Heroes Quest have had the Prospects and Mine Ops switched around so that Mine is now the left click. The size of the Skeletal Horror Arena instance has been increased to include additional scenery in the distance. The level 110 combat requirement from Dominion Tower and Dreadnips has been removed and is now a recommended combat level when talking to the Strange Face. The Dominion Staff and Sword now have 90 magic and attack requirements respectively. And finally, it is now possible to change the XP received from Shifting Tombs within the game. That is it for your patch notes as well as the game update. Both of those will be linked down in the description below if you want to go check them out for yourself. So head on over there to do so. And that wraps it up for the video. If you'd like to hit that like button. If you're not subscribed yet and you want to stay up to date on things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Peace.